Hey guys, I'm Zach Hobby here at Lourdes University and I'm part of the business leadership course and I hope you guys are all doing well today and staying warm. Today I'm here to talk to you guys in my TED talk about Serena Williams and what makes her a great leader in today's world and society. And first I'm going to give a little bit of background information about who she is and why she's so, you know, great in my eyes. Serena Williams is an African-American women's tennis player, and she's on the WTA tour. Uh, she's from the United States of America, and she's won 23 Grand Slam titles in her lifetime. She's the second best in the sport on the list, and she's also held the number one spot in women's tennis for a total of 319 weeks, which ranks number three all-time on the list for women's tennis and singles. She was originally born in Saginaw, Michigan, which is where I grew up. Not specifically in Saginaw, but down the road from her in Detroit, Michigan. And in 1984, she moved to California with her family and grew up in a rougher part of California called Compton. From here, she, you know, knew that poverty and being in the lower class wasn't for her. And she, you know, wanted to help her family and help herself and get herself out of that situation and really, you know, try to use tennis as a journey to get her to where, you know, she is now today and she uses a lot of her motivation and uh skill of the game of the sport to you know make her who she is today going into this i'm going to talk to you guys about the different types of leaderships i feel like she brings to the table because she's not just one specific type i'd say she shows very much so a transformational leader authoritative leader an inspirational and motivational leader and she possesses strong emotional intelligence with a strong sense of self-regulation to inspire others that are also on a journey in this world. In its 2017 interview with Gail King, Serena talks about, at every tournament I'm at, I'm expected to win every single time that I show up. If I don't win, that's bigger news than winning. She says she takes any negative comments or energy from the media and press and bottles them up to keep her own sanity and figuring out what the next step is. So going from here, one of my favorite quotes from her is that I can relate with personally is, I really think a champion is defined not by their wins, but by how they recover when they fall, <clears throat> which to me says volumes. What do I do as a leader of the sport when I'm playing, or what do I have to do to bounce back in order to be successful? Um... At the age of 17 years old, she won her first championship, and she quotes, Winning is addictive. Once, you're, once you experience it, you just want to keep winning over and over and over again. Which, you know, at 23 Grand Slam titles and the almost last 25 plus years, you know, I can't blame her for wanting to keep coming back for more when you're one of the best. You know, it's got to be an amazing feeling and an amazing accomplishment to want to keep coming back and fighting and proving that you're, you know, you're the best after facing so much adversity and so much, you know, trauma in one's life. So going off of the, some of the traumas and some of the hardships she's had to face in her life, um, for example, she is one person that I really admire for the simple fact that I can also relate to her, that, you know, she had blood clots in her lungs and, you know, at one point when she was on the tour and back in, I think it was 2000. 12 is when this happened and you know she just withdrew from the french open and she was you know devastated you know she's going through a crazy health crisis that you know she might not bounce back from and you know what she said screw that i'm way tougher i'm way stronger and you know i'm gonna come back and really show these people that you know i'm still that person and that i'm not changed and I'm still here to do the same job and the same thing that you know I'd do any other day if I did have blood clots or my lungs or if I didn't. So in 2012 her very first tournament back which was Wimbledon a grass tournament that's in uh, London England uh, she ended up winning that one and then right from there it was the same year as the Olympics which followed up with that and she won the gold singles and doubles with her sister Venus Williams and <laughs> that's insane just like the honors of just winning singles but not just doing that with your sister who also won it in doubles you know going from there she wasn't just done there she also continued on with 
winning the U.S. Open immediately after the end of the summer. So it was just like a f chronicles of effects, you know, and success for the, you know, kept driving her to want more and want more. And honestly, I feel like that's just a very inspiring like moment for anybody because could you imagine going through blood clots in your lungs and trying to bounce back and learning just how to breathe and come back and figure out how to play the game again in front of millions of people she did that so gracefully and it's just absolutely incredible words can't really describe that um also going off that, uh, she has numerous victories on the court that have largely been a positive influence on young boys and young girls who see Serena as a role model and an ambassador of tennis. When she's not just inspiring these young boys and girls, I'm also going to say she empowers women's rights. And not just that, she also energizes the African American community by being part of the Black Lives Matters movement. Um... <laughs> She just isn't inspiring others through her ability to play the game, but she is also a huge supporter of women being women. She thinks women should be able to be strong and powerful, and just like how a man is viewed, and I totally agree with her 120%. In 2011, she played in a match with Kim Kleisters at the U.S. Open. I won't forget this. She was deducted points from a referee because she claimed that the male ref uh, was giving her a harder time because she was a woman. Which, you know, in today's society and world, you know, we're kind of, I hope, going away from those types of ways. And, you know, we're coming to a point in the time now where we're seeing, you know, hey, women are just as strong as a man. They are just as, you know, mindful and intelligent and intellectual. And they bring a lot to the table, too, that, you know, just anything as much as a man could. And her first years as an African-American athlete on the tour, she was constantly judged on the court for the color of her skin. And there was a particular tournament called Indian Wells, and I don't know, like, how some human beings can just be so disgusting and say some of the vulgar words and things that they were shouting to her, but, you know, she went out there and, you know, did her thing, and I just admire her for that because the sport is predominantly a white dominated sport, sadly to say it as it is. And, you know, a lot of people just didn't like her for the simple fact that she wore beads in her hair, you know, and just stuff like that. I mean, it's a culture thing. And I think that, you know, back in the old days, just people just didn't understand, you know, we're people and we should all be able to, you know, at the end of the day, be treated equally if another and with one another and we all bleed the same colors so you know I think she's definitely been somebody that's you know been able to get out there and you know set the tone for what society really should be for us also when she's not doing all the other things I just listed she's embracing motherhood now and competing again she was out for a little bit I know and she just had her daughter and I'm going to say she's definitely an advocate for women and, you know, saying, hey, if I just had a daughter, you know, within the last so many months and I just got back on tour and I've already won my first event, you know, so can you guys. You guys can do anything in this world. And I think she's very inspiring when she says things like this. Um, she had to learn how to embrace her body as a woman because for years, you know, she was always smaller and she had learned how to grow into her body necessarily, who was total opposite of her sister, who was, you know, tall and linky. Um, once she grew into it, she was characterized as being more too masculine and muscular. And she says, as long as I'm healthy, I don't care what other people think of me anymore. And my body has allowed me to play at the highest level of tennis and has allowed me to win so many titles. And I love myself for that. Which, you know, hey, I think we all go through a little bit of body dysmorphia at some point or shape or form in our time. And I really appreciate her for that. And to kind of just end everything, uh, you know, numbers don't really lie, but she was the second most paid female athlete of this time at $24.6 million. I'm just like absolutely jaw dropper. Like, that's inc it's insane. You know, she totally deserves it. And, you know, I hope that she keeps inspiring, you know, so many different people and others out there in today's world and society. Thanks for coming and uh, listening to my TED Talk, guys.